Hey there, my name is Mike, and in this video I would like to show you how to remove the switch boot from your Hinton flashlight. So to get started, let's take off the tail cap. You can slip a piece of fabric in between the clip and the body if you don't want to scratch things up too much. Once you've got the tail off, there's no need to take the clip off the body. It's held in place by this black o-ring here. You can leave the clip on. What you do need to do is find yourself a pair of fine tipped tweezers like these ones. And you want to locate these two holes in the retaining ring. There's a brass retaining ring with two little holes in it. Slip your tweezers in there and you're going to twist it around. Now, as you're undoing this, hold on to things a bit because there's a pretty strong spring inside the body and it will try and shove everything out and stuff might go flying everywhere. So you can take this whole assembly out if it falls apart, that's no problem. There's a few parts here. There is a switch on a circuit board. There is a brass retaining ring. And there is a little 3D printed gasket that centers the spring. So if it falls apart, don't panic. Once you get that out, you can reach in here with your tweezers. Take out this strong spring that's in the middle. Put that down there. And then there is a white Delrin cap, you can see it, and it's kind of got a crack in it. Let me turn the clip so you can see that. It's got a crack in there that allows this thing to come out. So just slip your tweezers down in there, grab this ring, the crack will allow it to squeeze a little bit, and just gently work it out of there without breaking anything. That's the goal at least. There we go. You can sit that down there. And once you've got that done, you can see the switch boot sitting down at the bottom. Just take your finger, pop it out, just like that. There are a couple parts to the switch assembly. You can see in here, there is a black O-ring nestled inside the switch housing. It can get all kinds of lint and debris and stuff in there, so it doesn't hurt to get in there with a paper towel or maybe some compressed air. Clean it out a little bit. That O-ring does need lubricated if you want to have a nice smooth switch motion. So for the O-rings, I use this multi-purpose super lube here. It's PTFE, which is Teflon, but anything that's safe for a nitrile O-ring, you can use. And check on the internet whether or not your grease is safe for nitrile. I think most of them are. So grab yourself a bit of this, and you want to apply a little bit around ring just get that nice and greased up perfect and what I find helps too is to put a little bit on the actual switch boot itself so I usually put a bit around the outside here and the o-ring should smear it around but it doesn't hurt to give it a little little rub with your fingertips Okay, and then to put it all back together, it's just the reverse process. So get your switch housing, get your switch boot, and you want to just drop this in there like that. It's a little bit of a tight squeeze, so take your pinky finger, get it in there, and just push until the switch boot pops up like that. There you go. Next thing after that is the white Delrin cup that you can see here. Now it's kind of got an inside, like a cup-like inside, and it's got an outside. You want to put it in so that the cup is facing down into the boot like this. The idea is the switch boot is cradled inside this cup. So to get it back in, you can squeeze it a bit. That's what the crack's for, so it fits through this hole. So I'll just take that, we're going to jam that guy back in there a little bit. And then just take your tweezers and seat it in there. So when it's properly seated, you'll see that it runs around the outside and the titanium switch boot is cradled inside the cup. Once you've got that in there, get your powerful spring, drop it right down the center so it's sitting in the middle. Then comes the actual switch. This is an Omton 1288 in case you need to replace it or repair it. And here comes the bit of fun right here, putting the retaining ring back on. 
the retaining rings are stamped with a tiny serial number. You can see it when you look. That serial number should be facing out. So I just drop that ring right on top there. And usually what I do to get these back in, get your tweezers, get them in the hole, push the whole thing down and just give it a bit of a turn. You gotta kind of be careful with the pocket clip. It tends to get in the way, but there you go. Just get it down a bit. It doesn't need to be screwed all the way down. You can see that the spring likes to kind of wander a little bit. It's not quite on center here, and we do want it to be kind of centered. So get the spring a little bit centered in the middle, and then grab this retaining ring here, and the centering ring. It doesn't really matter which way is out. You can do it any way you'd like. And I think I'm gonna flip it over. Let's do it the other way. That guy just pops in the middle, and it just kind of squishes down. Same as the white Delrin ring just squishes into the middle there. The goal is to get it kind of level. It doesn't need to be perfect, but what it helps do is it insulates this spring from touching the outside, and it also keeps the whole assembly centered. So as long as it's in there and it's kind of tight, you're good to go. And with that reassembled, we just need to get our brass retaining ring, get our tweezers in the hole here, just gently start screwing down. Not too tight, okay? Just till it's kind of till it feels kind of snug is what I like to say. So when you're turning it and it feels like it's come to a natural stop and it doesn't really want to go anymore, that should be enough. You don't need to go too much past that. I'm just gonna tamp down this little spacer a bit so that it's a little bit more flat. Like I said, it doesn't need to be perfect, just needs to be in the middle. And then once you're done, give it a few test clicks. Make sure it feels nice. Make sure it's got a nice spring to it. If it feels kind of crunchy or it doesn't feel quite right, take the brass retaining ring back off and then turn the switch a little bit just so the actual switch inside sits a little bit differently and then re reassemble it. Occasionally, depending on how you put the switch in, it sits on the, the strong spring and it's not always the best feeling. So that feels great. And we're done. We can put this back in the light. So let's take the light over here, drop the battery back in it. Once again, to protect the finish on the light, usually you slip something in there and then reassemble it. And then just test that it's working okay. That's it. Congratulations. You cleaned out your switch boot and hopefully it's feeling great under your finger. If you have any questions or any problems, you send me an email anytime, okay? Copperandcurrent at gmail.com. Thanks very much, and have a great day.